Me and him, we met. I was um, I was fifteen, turning sixteen. So before him, I didn't know who I was. <laughs> you know, um, I was very quiet. I was shy. You know, I got into things that little girls get into. Um, how I met him is an interesting story. <laughs> he might tell you something completely, <laughs> something different. I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay. <laughs> He's going to make it sound like I was always the one. <laughs> so, um. Before me and my wife, uh, you know, I was a 16 year old kid, pretty regular 16 year old kid. But, um, what kind of separated me from all of my friends was I wasn't too concentrated on like girls and dating and stuff like that. My whole life was dedicated to basketball. Mm -hmm. I took my basketball everywhere, to the store, to funerals, to church, to any, literally anywhere I went. And because of my dedication to basketball, I became one of the best players in Best Out Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? We had people coming from Flatbush, Canarsie, coming to my block just to play me in basketball. It was that real. Bro. Oh, we're going to get comments. Be yeah. like, yeah, okay, I know yeah, they were ass bullshit. Right. You know that's I mean? that's okay. a fact. So you might probably see some people, okay. in, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was straight basketball. So how I used to spend my days, I'll um, play ball all day long, and then I'll go inside my house, and I'll play the piano for the rest of the night. I was a super boring kid, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So my dad, he um, grew up in the music industry, and um, he's done music with Mariah Carey, The Temptations. He's done a lot of music productions. You know what I'm saying? And he taught me how to play the piano. The piano was his thing, you know? So, you know, me wanting to be like my dad more than anybody in the world because he was such of a positive role model in my life, I took after that. Yo, dad, can you teach me how to play the piano? And he'll literally teach me how to play songs. And I would literally play the same, like, four or five songs all night until I could, like, perfect it and even add my own little... You know what I'm saying? Some alpagios that I've never played before. You know what I'm saying? To the to the um to the songs. And um that was me, bro, every day. I literally had two girlfriends before I met my wife. Me and my my girls, we were supposed to be we were supposed to go to a movie theater in Brooklyn to see Fat Albert. Or was it a scary movie? I can't even remember now. But anyway, whatever movie that was, it got um, it was sold out. So we had to go to the city. And um, <laughs> as we getting out the train station, we walk, I mean, the train, we walk up the stairs to go to the street. And uh, what happened? <laughs> My friend was looking at him and she kind of like tripped up the stairs because she wasn't paying attention. And he started laughing or whatever. Talking to girls was not something that I used to do, you know? So how we met, um, and I always tell her, man, every time I tell a story, I'm like, it was just a, a match made in heaven. It was supposed to happen. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. I, I, really, I really believe it was supposed to because it was Christmas of 2004. Super cold outside, bro. But you know, my dad had just bought me some Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, Dickies was Smelling hot. yourself. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I was yeah, flea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, flea, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... I was out in Far Rockaway with my brother chilling with him, you know, new outfit on. I'm about to go chill with my bros, you know what I'm saying? So I'm out there. And then um, something told me, man, you don't even got to spend a night out here this weekend, bro. Like, let's head back to the crib. So I got back on the train. And um, as I'm coming in the gate, my dad, his cousin, and my brother in law was walking out the gate. So I'm like, yo, where y'all going? We ain't even getting, I ain't even getting the house yet. I'm at the gate. They're like, yo, we about to go see Fat Albert. You want to come? Like, hell yeah, I want to come. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm already dressed too. I got these new sneakers I want to show off. And it was the white, it was the white and wheat 13s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they had just dropped. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I want to go. Like, what's up? So we hop on the train. We go to the movie theater downtown Brooklyn. It was a brand new movie theater, right? So with that being said, everybody want to go there now. Bro, the line was literally down the block, across the street, and around the corner to see Fat Albert. So we like, yo, ain't no way we waiting on this line. Not in the cold, bro, to see a movie is clipped. So my dad didn't want to give up. So he was like, yo, let's hit 42nd Street up. You know, they got a huge movie theater out there. There's no way the line could be like this. So let's try it. If it's too packed over there, then we just not going to see it tonight. So like, all right, bet, fine, no problem. I'm saying we all hop on the train, right? 
this story, this part of this is where the story gets weird. You know what I'm saying? So we hop off the train. I see a group of girls, right? It's three girls. And I ain't, I ain't see the dude yet, though. So one of the girls, we, we walk, if I have braids and stuff like that, long braids and stuff. So one of the girls run up to me and she literally, bro, just looking at me, like standing right on the side of me, like less than two feet away, like invading my whole private space, bro. Just looking at me like this on some silly stuff. So I'm looking at her and mind you, I'm a shy dude. I don't even know what to really do or say, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just looking at her like, I right, she looking at me. She was choosing. Definitely, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Definitely. Like, and I, I didn't understand that at the moment, but um, so I'm just like, yo, all right. But I ain't gonna lie, I was low-key flattered because, you know, I had girls like me, but not do no brave shit like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. up with, you know what I'm saying? Somehow, we end up in the same movie theater. The same movie. Like, um, we were waiting outside. I guess they were cleaning the movie theater. So the whole, everybody that had tickets were just waiting outside. And... He was over there with, I don't know, he was with his people. I was with mine. And then they were like, yo, that's that dude. That's that dude that she was staring at. Like, and we were just laughing or whatever. And we end up in the movie theater. Somehow he ended up sitting next to me. Mm. <laughs> and from what, I, from what my friend told me, when I, we went out, me and my other friend, we, it was three of us, four of us. We went out to go get our snacks or whatever. And he asked my friend, like, who's that girl? She was like, oh, that's that boy, that, that boy that's with us. That's her boyfriend, so you can't talk to her. But the one I'm sitting next to, she's single. You could talk to her. So <laughs> he was like, okay. I came back and the movie started. He's just staring at me. Not even watching the movie. He's just staring. I'm like, why are you staring at me? And then I'm with my dad too. So I kind of like the man. I, you know, I'm thinking of making my dad proud. I never brought no girls around. So when he see that, I'm like, oh, yeah, you see girls like me, dude. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We out here. So, boom, we go into the movie theater. Then we go up to the floor where our movie's playing. We go straight up to the floor. It's still packed up there, but at least we got into a building. I hear, Psst. I look over. I'm like, some girls that was in the, in the uh, train station. So I'm like, all right, man. I see they waiting for the same movie we about to go see. So I'm like, yo, dad, those girls over there, I think they like me, bro. So <laughs> when this movie starts, I'm going to go sit with them, wherever they sitting at. Never did or said anything like that a day in my life, bro. But this day, I was brave, bro. I, I really think it was the sneakers, bro. <laughs> you feel me? I was so stuck. So I was like, all right, man. So we go sit down. There's an empty chair right at the end of the aisle. There's Jaleesa, her friend Tara, her other friend Jessica, and Jessica's boyfriend. Okay. Now, Jessica was the girl that came walking up to me, looking me in the face while her boyfriend was there. <laughs> so, as soon as I sit down, right, Jaleesa right there, she like, she looked at her friend, she like, no, this dude did not come over here and sit next to us. Who you think he is? Like, you know what I'm saying? So they laughing. So Jaleesa and the girl that came with her boyfriend, Jessica, they got up and went to the bathroom, right? So when they got up, the girl Tara, she was like, yo, 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 you. I'm like, what's up? What's good? I wasn't really attracted to Tara. You know, she was a bigger girl, but she was cool as heck. She was like, yo, that girl that, that was looking at you in the um, train station, yo, that's her boyfriend right there. Wait, at the time when she walked up to you, he was right there or he met them after? He probably... I don't know. I, I want to hope that he wasn't in the train station because if, if so, that was completely disrespectful. I really want to hope that he met them at the movie theater. I really want to believe that. I never asked Jaleesa that. I always thought that he was just there and Jessica just got on some brave shit and just did that. But I think that's what happened, bro. So either way, you know, Tara telling me, she like, yo, the girl, the light-skinned girl, nah, that's her boyfriend. But she, she was like, but the girl you sitting next, right next to, she's single. You could go for her. And I remember her face, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, the girl was cute. You know what I'm saying? She was cute, too. I liked her outfit and all that. She was looking nice. So I'm like, oh, word, say no more. You know what I'm saying? So when they came back, bro, literally, bro, this is how much game I didn't have, bro. She come back. She sit right here. The movie comes on, bro. I'm literally like this. <laughs> she said that, too. Literally, bro, like this, talking to her. The screen is this way. Yeah. 
I don't know what's going on in the movie. I'm talking to her like this, yo, da 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 da, saying the stupidest stuff. Yeah, I know how to braid. I'm thinking I'm impressive by saying, I don't know how to braid. I'm thinking I'm impressing her. You know what I'm saying? My dumb ass, I told her I had a kid. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm impressing her, bro. Like, cause I, I claim my nephew as my son. Like, yeah, I got a kid. You know what I'm saying? I be changing diapers and all that. I'm thinking this is what girls like. I don't, I'm not knowing that. I'm making myself sound foolish, but that's how much riz I didn't have. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, he said something, because, I don't know, he said something you're nice to look at or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. And the whole movie, he's just staring at me and saying silly things like, I got a son. He didn't. I don't know. It's, what else did he say to me? Some, I don't know. Just craziness, crazy things he was saying to me. I'm like, just watch the movie. He's like... I'd rather watch you. Mm. High level <laughs> game right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, then at the end of the movie, he was like, can I get your number? I was like, nah, but you could, you could put yours in mine, in mm. my phone. He's like, you got to promise to call me. I'm like, okay. And he did. And <laughs> that's how we met. I did call him at night, actually. He ain't answered him, but he called me back. But at, by the end of that night, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I told her the whole time, like, yo, I gave him my phone number. I ain't have a cell phone. Like, yo, just promise me you'll call me tonight, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I was starting to like him for some reason. I don't know. I think I fall in love easy or something like that, bro. Like, yo, just promise me you call me or whatever. So she's like, all right, I will. I ain't believe her. Got to the crib. I forgot her name and all that. Yeah, I forgot her name. So we get to the house. I see Jaleesa Sweet pop up on a on a um, on a call ID. Like I never seen this before. Picked it up. It was Shorty. So we spoke all night long, bro. And by the end of that conversation, I was like, "Yo, you my girlfriend." Damn. And she was like, "Okay." Damn. And that's how that happened, bro. Y'all y'all live? Did y'all live in the same part of town? Did y'all nah, live in so, different high schools? Like so I I was living in Besta. She was in Crown Heights. That's about. To get to our house was probably like 15 minutes on the bus. Okay, okay. Yeah, so she was probably, in reality, probably about two or three miles away from me. So y'all might have ran into each other at some point anyway type yeah, thing. Yeah, okay. because later on in the relationship, I found out she used to come up to my school. My school was one of the smallest schools in like history, bro. 600 people at max capacity. Acorn Community High School down in, um, in Brooklyn. And But we used to throw some fire parties. Like our parties was fire. So other schools from around Brooklyn used to come to us. And evidently... She used to come to some of them. So we probably seen each other in, in passing, but you know, just never paid any mind to each other type stuff. Yeah, bro. Damn. Yeah, so that's how we met, man. We literally did grow up together. Yeah. Like, cause we were kids. We um had no idea what real relationships actually take. And then we had a lot of growing pains going through things. I mean, Everybody goes through things. We still go through things, so it's never perfect. Um, just learning what each other want and what we don't want. And then, again, from being 16 to now, that changes because what you want as a kid, you don't want it as an adult or vice versa, whatever. Um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. We we got children, so you know that adds a whole nother level to things. Cause now we got other people that we gotta worry about, <laughs> and other people that we have to make um, happy. And sometimes you get put on the back burner. Our relationship now it's pretty steady. Um, we go through things and we get over them. Our kids are a lot to do with our, our relationship right now. Just raising them and trying to, we have different parenting styles. So that kind of throws in a little wrench in our relationship. He's more strict, I'm not, I'm more easygoing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that 
me and him made it work because we chose to. Mm. Like, you wake up, you have to wake up every day and choose that person over and over. Think about what, what can I do for you today? How can I help you today? What will make you smile? That's kind of what we do. <laughs> Last thing, brother. We need to talk. <laughs> ah, let's do it. Shout out to the We Need to Talk. We need to talk one. Yes, we need to talk two. I don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what was the concept um, behind We Need to Talk? Um, what is it that you and your wife are trying to accomplish? What What would you say is your mission statement? What, what are y'all trying right. to do? Right. So um, We Need to Talk, our rendition yeah. of We Need to Talk, um, it started because it was a, a relationship slash parent slash friend slash military couple type thing. You understand what I'm saying? So typically in a relationship, when either the husband or the wife hears, we need to talk, it's usually something serious. You know, I'm um, not saying it's detrimental to the, the relationship, but it could be bills. It could be somebody that said the wrong thing to one of your kids. But we need to talk is usually something serious. And that's what we um we try to we try to keep our topics on serious, on real life relationships, parenting, and friendships. You understand what I'm saying? So it came about, man, one time, uh, me and Jaleesa were just sitting down, bro. We was in the, um, this is before the pandemic. This was back in like 2018. We were still living in Brooklyn. And I was trying to figure things out. But I was like, babe, I don't really like shooting music videos no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to do something else. I want to do something that's more authentic to, to me. You know what I'm saying? And um, we just had a whole talk, bro. And she was like, that'd, that'd be good for a show. That'd be a cool topic for a show. We should start like a podcast or something. So honestly speaking, we need to talk. It was her idea, bro. It was her idea. So... I was like, hmm, you're right. But then I also knew my wife was a shy, very shy woman. So she was really talking about, you can do this. No, she wanted to be there too. Really? She, okay, yeah, okay, she wanted okay. to be there too. So what I did, this is part of knowing your, your woman and knowing your spouse. I slowly inched her into the entertainment, being behind the camera. Slowly. I'll do something like, hey, babe, let's go out and take some pictures or something like that. Or I'll be at a dinner date with her. I'm, yo, keep that pose right there. And I'll get her used to being behind the lens and having eyes on her. And I'll post her. And I'll say, oh, babe, look, look what this, this person like your dress. And then get her warmed up. And then eventually, by the time we moved down here to North Carolina, we was able to shoot our first episode, bro. And she did pretty damn well. We spoke about the first time we met, uh, our first date, because I stood her up on our first date, which was horrible. Ooh. Yeah, that was terrible. That was terrible. But um, yeah, but that's how that's how we need to talk came up, bro. And we've been loving it. You know what I'm saying? I, and I, I, we love your content as well, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm happy that we are a we need to talk family. I don't believe there's a one and two. I believe that we are a we need to talk family. Because look at us collabing right now. And you're going to have you on ours as well. So, you know what I'm saying? It's a family, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, like, people could see, like, this collaboration and see that there's no bad blood, no malice between nobody. We have a similar name, different brands. You see, my logo is completely different from yours. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's just the fact that we can come over and we can talk. Absolutely. We need to talk. Especially as black people. Oh, yes, sir. I love the color of this skin, man. I love it. Why did y'all steal my name? <laughs> and like, what is your what is your goal with the podcast? That was my fault. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know about you, but he was asking with some topics and um I mean some names that we can go and I thought about that. Only because we were gonna talk about like relationship things and um you see on TV like back in the days when the wife say we need to right. talk, then it's like oh we're in danger, trouble. Right? Yeah, that kind of thing. That's why. Um he wanted to start it, and I just joined him. This is not something that I would do on my own. Um, <laughs> so he, just, he just wants to promote togetherness like, and bring a voice to men and their feelings.